someone thought about possibly buying Jude Birmingham, then that's the sort of, you're you're talking like two twenty, aren't you? For a 23-year-old boy, incredible. Right, well, let's speak to a man that's been watching him at close quarters over in Spain, former Tottenham coverage of Man United striker turned Spanish football expert Terry Gibson. Terry, a very good morning, pal. How are you? Morning, Terry. Good morning, Ellie. And good to speak to you again. Great, mate. Thanks for joining us this morning, Terry. We're just speaking, and you probably heard us. I mean, this is an absolutely remarkable start to, to Jude's um, career in Spain with Real Madrid. We, we all knew how talented he is. He's fantastic from Birmingham to move to Dortmund. But this has surprised everybody. It has. And, and I have to say, you know, I mean, he's, he's 20 years old. And you think about what he's done in his career. And I've been looking at his stats. I had a real good close look at the weekend to see how he's actually doing it. Because like everyone else, I've just sat there and marvelled at a young player stepping into the, the cauldron of the Bernabeu and to Real Madrid and, and seeing how he would handle the whole situation. And he's he's played with no fear, first and foremost. But he's, the way he's, the, the position he's playing has helped him. I think modern day football in terms of midfielders, how they react to tracking midfielders running into the box has helped him. He's taken advantage of that. He's playing in a left-sided midfield position. At the weekend, he played left side midfield in the midfield four with Vinicius ahead of him on the left as well. So there's a combination down that left side that's that's in the planning and he's progressing. And and that's what I, I think about Jude Bellingham. When I look at him now, I look at a player who's got a, the, the instincts of an out-and-out striker. Mm. You know, if, if a goalkeeper makes a save and there's a follow-up to be had, he's the one there snapping up the rebound. Terry, just a quick mate. I'm, I'm looking at that yeah. midfield just now, Valverde, Camavinga, Modric, and you said Bellingham come in off the left with Vinicius Junior in front. Did they play without a centre forward? Where did they play Osselu? Osselu played centre forward on right. his own. And it, it was everyone that is the, the, the narrative is that Vinicius is now playing up front, but he's not. You look at his touch map, his heat map, and where he plays, he's still playing down the left. And Bellingham's playing down the left as well. So it's, mm. it's a weird one how the structure of this team is set up. But they're really powerful down their left side. And, and and what Jude Bellingham has been doing is he's realised now that the modern day midfield players, and Andy will, will tell you about this, there's there's no personal duels anymore. They don't, you know, back in the day it used to be 4 4 2, so two against two in midfield. You're, yeah. you're running forward, you're, you're responsible for tracking your opponent. That doesn't happen now because you've got so many different systems in midfield. And Jude Bellingham is just running from deep. Time these runs, he's not running like a lunatic into the box every time. But when he makes those runs into the box, it's astonishing. I'm looking now and I'm thinking, well, no one's tracked him back. Yeah. Mm. And, and you know, sooner or later, opponents of Real Madrid are going to look at it and go, he's got to be stopped. Someone's going to have to track Someone's him back. Someone's going to have to try and yeah, do something to nullify him a bit, Terry, isn't they? Is yeah, any, because... As, Terry, sorry, has anybody that you can remember, and of course you've, you've watched so much... And you'll have seen yep. so many players going into Madrid. Has anybody made a better start to life in Real Madrid that you can remember? No, only Ronaldo. Ronaldo is the same as, as Jude Bellingham. That's right. that's the level. So Ronaldo was a, a goal scorer. He's an attacking player and he's totally different to Jude Bellingham, who's a midfield player. And, and I have to add with Jude Bellingham as well. You look at his, his play, he's defending as well. It's not just a question of... He's got no defensive responsibility, so he can hang around and, and play in an attacking midfield role. In that midfield quartet of the weekend, he was back defending. He's working hard in midfield. He does all the attributes you need from a midfield player. But then all of a sudden, he pops up in the box. And I have to say, literally every chance he's had this season, he's finished. Mm. So that that's, you know, you look at his, 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 what he's expected to do in front of the goal. It's not like he's had 20 chances and taken 10 of them. No. It's pretty much like he's had about twelve and taken ten. Yeah, I I, I commentated on the uh, the Real Madrid uh, Union Berlin game, Terry, yeah. in the in the in the Champions League, and and which was a bit of a struggle for Madrid. They never really got it going that night, and then of course, sure enough, mm -hmm. Jude Jude ends up popping one in from it was like you know it was a couple of yards out, but he was in the right place to apply that finish, and I and. And just watching the scenes around the, the stadium, watching everybody on their feet, obviously, why wouldn't they be celebrating a goal? But And just seeing him lapping it up, it's just incredible how, mm -hmm. how amazing he's done. It's a wonderful story, I think. It really is. Oh, totally. I mean, it, I don't know about you guys, but when you were 20, did you have any fear when you were playing football? Like my fear yeah. crept in when I was about 23, 24, and you, you were in a one or two relegation battles. But when you're that age, yeah. 
I mean, he's been doing it since he was 16. And I looked at his stats, and at 16, he got four in 44 for Birmingham, four in 44, uh, 46 when he was 17 for Dortmund, then six in 44. Last season at Dortmund, he got 14 goals. Right. So it tells me now that maybe he got the scent there for maybe mm. I can do a bit more now. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm settling in. I'm 19 years old. I've got the world at my feet. I'm going to start getting myself in the box now. So 14 last year was a good total for Dortmund, but yeah. 10 in his first 10 for Real Madrid is just off the scale. But it is. He's playing with no fear, and he did that in his first game. He wasn't shy. He was on play of, of playing alongside Modric and Kroos. He, I wouldn't say he was ordering them about. He was encouraging them and, and stuff like that. And he just looked like, in his first pre-season friendly against Manchester United. He looked like he'd been at Real Madrid for about five years. It didn't mm. look like a new player. It was it was astonishing, and that's how it's progressed since just just the first game of the season. Just finally, Terry, um, what about playing for England? Um, his best position, obviously, you would imagine he's going to be just in and around, in behind Harry Kane somewhere there in that sort of position. But that's also a position that Madison potentially could operate in, etc. Do you see Bellingham playing a slightly different role or has Gareth now got to effectively start building building an attacking England team around him? Well, it, it, would, it would look kind of strange if Bellingham is doing this for Real Madrid and, and, mm. and doesn't get a similar opportunity to play for England. He's probably, Gareth Southgate's problem is that Drew Bellingham is so good everywhere he plays in midfield. So if he wants to play him in, as an orthodox central midfield player, He'll still, do a, still do a fantastic job there. Are these goals going to continue at this rate? I mm. didn't think so after about five games. We're now 10 games in and he's on a goal a game. So I think it's just two in 26 for England. So there has to be a balance there that, that Gareth Southgate has to look at and think, I've got truly one of the world's greats. Terry, just, a, Terry, I just want a quick... I've got to go to the cricket after a break here. I'm looking at the league at this moment in time. Usual suspects up there, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Real yeah. Madrid. What about Girona? Where's that come from? Well, they're a team that they're, they're part of the city group, so they're part of Man City. So they've got good players. They haven't spent a fortune, and they've had an incredible start to the league. The only game they've lost was to Real Madrid yeah. a couple of weeks ago, and they've been they've, they've got a really good set of players. They were decent last year. They're progressing each year, as you'd expect when they're they're, they're backed by the city group. They do get good players from all over the place, from Brazil, from Ukraine, and without spending a fortune. So. Mm-hmm. It's it's a really good story, I have to say, but the, the, the usual three are going to be the top three at the end of the season and, and my tip is for Atletico to win it this year. Brilliant, mm-hmm. Terry. Listen, mate, great Terry. to have you on this morning. Thanks. Keep up the good work, pal. Talk Sport Breakfast, waking you up Monday to Friday morning from 6am on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.